Hello, my name is Reverend Dr. May Elise Hammond. Today is Tuesday, January 9th, and it's day 95. Um, most of my updates today come from the New York Times, but they've been reported wise, widely in other news outlets. Um, the most significant news is that a Hezbollah drone commander was reportedly killed in Lebanon. Um, reports say the Hezbollah commander was behind the drone strikes in Israel, uh, and he was killed in an attack in a, on a vehicle in Lebanon near the home of Hezbollah's Radwan force commander, Wassam Atawil, uh, who was killed yesterday. Hezbollah confirmed on Monday that one of its commanders had been killed in a strike in southern Lebanon, adding to the concerns that Israel's fight against Hamas in Gaza would erupt into a wider regional war. So we've been hearing a lot about that the concerns that the war um, in Gaza would extend to the West Bank or the northern border of Israel with South Lebanon and Hamas. The killing of the commander identified as Wissam Hassan al tawil came as Israel's Prime Minister Netanyahu visited troops near the border with Lebanon and vowed that Israel will, quote, do everything to restore security to the north, end quote. At the time of um, this recording, uh, so today is, um, I said, today is, <laughs> today is Tuesday. Um, so on at, on Tuesday afternoon in Israel, there were reports that alarms were sounding in the upper Galilee and in northern Israel due to hostile aerial intrusion. This was uh, for the seventh time on Wednesday. So that can be drone strikes. That could mean any type of aerial intrusion. Um, so the escalations at the border are continuing. And Secretary Blinken of the United States is continuing to have his meetings in the Middle East. Um, as I mentioned yesterday, Saudi Arabia still is interested in returning to the normalization agreement with Israel. There were thoughts and hopes that that could be used as leverage, um, but there's been no further conversation about that. Blinken um, said on Monday that the leader of Saudi Arabia told um, him that establish, establishing diplomatic relations uh, with Israel was possible, but that it required an end to the war in Gaza and practical steps toward a Palestinian state. Blinken did have a meeting with Foreign Minister Katz in Israel, and prior to that meeting, Katz, speaking of October 7th, said, uh, and this is from um, a press statement that came out from the U.S. State Department, that Foreign Minister Katz of Israel said, we, being Israel, faced a horrible slaughter in the south of Israel. And when we are saying that it's like ISIS eliminated or that it was Warsaw from the days of the Nazis, some of the transcript was inaudible. So it just says inaudible in the transcript. But he made a reference to the Holocaust survivors. And he said, I remember the stories. It's familiar, all the brutal, the meaning of, of all of this. And they wanted um, us to be afraid, but they didn't succeed. We are united with our allies and inside Israel, the political, the government, we're united now and also in the society of Israel. And we have to finish this war. He talked about the brave heroes, the soldiers, and also the commitment of Israel to bring back the hostages. That was the readout from before the meeting. I would imagine um, either tomorrow or Friday, um, tomorrow, Kyle will be doing the Thursday online briefing that we do live. I'll do a video update, but Kyle Christofalo will be doing the, the live update, and we'll talk more about Blinken's visits in the Middle East. All the while, um, Israel confirmed that it has begun a new stage of the war in Gaza. Um, the Israeli military has begun a new, they're saying, less intense phase of its invasion in Gaza. It might be less intense because they've removed some of the troops, but the bombing has continued. Its chief spokesman has been saying um, that it's a less intense phase. After weeks from pressure from the United States and other allies to scale back an offensive that has caused widespread devastation and civilian deaths. But there's very few details about what the difference is in this phase, other than the fact that we know there are less soldiers in Gaza. The bombing has continued. The humanitarian crisis has continued. Um, it's becoming increasingly difficult to get aid, particularly into North Gaza. So the realities in Gaza, as of yet, have not changed. Uh, the spokesman um, of the military said that the Israeli campaign had started to transition to a campaign that would involve fewer ground troops, which I just spoke of, but also fewer airstrikes, which as of yet, we've not yet seen.
<clears throat> the World Health Organization had an official in Gaza who said that the health system is collapsing at a very rapid pace. Um, who officials voiced concern about the possible collapse of hospital provisions in southern and central Gaza. You'll recall that's where most of the internally displaced people are, with hundreds of medical staff and patients having fled facilities for their lives. Only about a third of Gaza's hospitals are functioning in any way. The fighting has intensified in central and southern areas where the vast majority of the population is located. And so there's um, an overburdening on the remaining hospitals. Sean Casey, who's the emergency medical team's coordinator for WHO, said we cannot lose these health facilities. They must be protected. There's been bombing around them and near them. Patients are risking their lives. Um, at a visit to Al-Aqsa in central Gaza two days ago, Sean Casey discovered 70% of the staff had deserted their posts. And that same night, hundreds of patients who were well enough to leave the hospital fled, um, according to his uh, update. He said, what we continue to see is a health system suffering, health workers unable to go to their workplace to care for patients because they fear for their lives. Patients who fear and their families who fear going to the hospital because they might die on the way to trying to get help. <clears throat> he said, we're seeing the health system collapse at a very rapid pace in addition to it getting increasingly difficult for who to make medical deliveries inside Gaza. Um, uh, on another issue at the United Nations, two um, UN experts said that the Hamas October 7th assaults, including sexual violence, could be crimes against humanity. According to the New York Times, um, that those attacks uh, amount to war crimes, and they might also be crimes against humanity, um, according to two experts, and following months of frustrated accusations from both Israel and women's groups at the UN, saying that the United Nations was ignoring rape, sexual mutilation of women, um, and other acts during the October 7th invasion. And then uh, Israel defending itself against genocide at the International Court of Justice, the ICJ. I mentioned yesterday that Israel had appointed the former Supreme Court president, Aaron uh, Aaron Barak, but I didn't know at the time that he had fled Nazi-occupied Lithuania as a boy and was immediately praised by Israelis after it was announced on Sunday, but was greeted by surprise and even criticism by others. So those ICJ meetings are still supposed to happen this week, is my understanding. And finally, I would invite you to join us online um, on Saturday, uh, East Coast time um, in the afternoon, 4, I think, or 4.30. I'll have to look at CMAP's website. But we have our prayer vigil in Washington, D.C. this Saturday afternoon. Um, that's the day of the March for Gaza. We are calling for a ceasefire, an end and a cessation of violence from everyone, from all sides, that it's in the best interest of all to call for a ceasefire, an end to war, an end to occupation, an end to injustice, to keep diligently, diligently working for peace for the return of hostages. So join us on Saturday virtually or in Washington, D.C. Prayers for all who are traveling, uh, as am I, um, and Godspeed in our efforts.